You could say being this close to presidential candidates has made Granite Staters kind of spoiled. And for Bedford school teacher Sherry Schmidt, this is a chance not to be passed up. That sort of thing is not anything that happens to voters in California or voters in, um, you know, in larger states like New York. They do not have that access. Thank you. Thanks for being here. But here we do have a lot of access. So now that her kids are older, she and her husband had an idea for the New Hampshire primary. We just kind of talked to each other and said, hey, wouldn't it be interesting this year to go and see every candidate who is running? So we said, let's do it. And that quest landed them in the spotlight. As the ubiquitous New Hampshire representative voter, I ended up with a front page story. Uh, William Weld, Pete Buttigieg, Kirsten Gillibrand, John Delaney, Tulsi Gabbard, for most of 2019 and into 2020, Sherry and her husband have been busy. Let's see, we have Andrew Yang, Elizabeth Warren, uh, Kirsten Gillibrand. They keep a running tally of who they've met and who's still on the list on the side of the kitchen fridge. Well, Tuesday I have Deval Patrick, Joe Walsh, uh, John Hick and Luca Bird dropped out before I could see him. And of course, uh, Michael Bloomberg is not going to be campaigning because he won't be in New Hampshire. Sherry started posting her visits on social media, which got the attention of an L.A. Times reporter. And then she was getting the visit. Next thing I know, you know, he's out in New Hampshire following me around for a weekend, and I ended up on the front page of the L.A. Times. Sherry says this is all like a civics lesson, one she hopes more people will show up for. I think that, to me, is a bigger issue, is how do you get more voter engagement? Um, and that's, that's a $64 million question that I'm not the person to answer. Sherry made it a quest to hit the road and meet candidates around New Hampshire. At our next stop, two people are hoping the candidates come to see them. We're going to have the, the community up here looking out and, you know, keeping an eye on the politicians, so to speak. Thomas Devaney and Somaya Kashi are visual artists. They decided to collaborate for a project called We the People. I thought it was a good idea to get it up during the primaries because uh, people will be looking this way, politicians will be in town, and um, it's a chance for us to speak to them as well. And Devaney is hoping this location will help get attention. The studio is right on Main Street, one story up. You may remember his Eye of Concord project that featured a massive eyeball. It's 109 right here. So go up 110. 110. For We the People, the artists built large projection screens in the windows where images of local citizens are looking out, reminding passerbys this is who we are. It was one of our thoughts was that maybe it would be a good time to have a piece like this that uh, talks about who we are uh, as a community. This is sort of continuing on talking about, you know, we as people, who, who are we as people. The artists hope politicians will reflect on their audience above and perhaps add to their primary experience while in our state. The project is really intended to say, you know, right. whatever you, whatever your differences are, right. we're all this is this is the ship we're in. You know, right. we got to work together. Right. And just kind of remember who the audience is and who who they're supposed to be serving at the end of the day. If the people's faces are the focus in Concord, you can head to Laconia, where the candidates' faces take center stage. See, I'm just going over those same lines. Longtime arts teacher Larry Freights is teaching these budding artists how to do a caricature of the primary candidates. Each student is randomly handed a candidate, then they have to focus on facial features to recreate them in cartoon, which we found can be a challenge. <music> Student Dean Anson had to draw the features of former governor Bill Weld. 
Um, he has uh, big ears and jowls. For teacher Larry Freights, sketching primary candidates is a longtime tradition. It started in the 1980s at the Balsams. What Steve had asked me to do was to do some caricatures of the candidates as they came to um, Dixville Notch. I would go up and I'd do caricatures of them and then we'd give them to the candidates. The whole idea was they would have a record in the ballot room of who ran that year. So every four years we'd run through that cycle. Over the years, he sketched many a candidate, but exactly how many, he doesn't know. Well, my slogan is when Freights creates, he really draws a crowd, so I, I guess I've done a crowd of them. While some look at policy or experience, the artist looks at the candidate's face. It's almost like we should be um, electing a president in the U.S. based on their best features and who would make the best caricature for four years. So what stands out about this round of primary candidates? I found this year uh, Joe Biden was the hardest. I think Bernie Sanders, you know, the hair. Pete Buttigieg, his nose sort of goes up a little bit. Amy Klobuchar is sort of neat because she, her hair comes down and she tends to keep doing that. Larry has sketched them all for public display at the Belknap Mill in Laconia. In fact, when Larry was putting them up, he got some witty advice from a passerby. I kept straightening the paintings and they kept going crooked. And her response to me was, she said, Larry, just don't worry about it, they're all crooked. 